Today, I'm going to talk about the hormonal obesity theory and how OMAD complements this hormonal obesity theory, which states that when we consume calories, our body will do two things with it. It will either store it as fat or use it in our energy system as basal metabolic energy. Use it up. Now, when we have too much insulin than what we need, the insulin is going to tell our body to store that those calories as fat. So calories are not as important as what our body does with the calories. Now, with that being said, on my weight loss journey, I definitely did count my calories, but I obviously ate foods that reduced my body's insulin response because the more insulin you have, the more your body is going to store weight. So I am going to explain how one meal a day complements this hormonal obesity theory. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Dila Joy, and I've lost the majority of my weight eating a one meal a day fasting schedule, mainly keto OMAD. I made this transformation on my overall weight loss journey, and this was my one meal a day transformation. I started my weight loss journey at 282 pounds. After getting stuck at 220 pounds for years, I decided to introduce one meal a day, and it really helped me break through very resistant weight loss and got me to my lowest weight. I am back on the one meal a day train and I'm ready to share and drop some OMAD knowledge. So what is OMAD? OMAD is literally just condensing your calories and your food within a four hour eating window or a one hour eating window. Buyer beware with the four hour eating window. If you're going to eat refined carbohydrates and high fatty foods or high calorie foods, you are probably going to gain weight. Most likely you're going to gain weight because you're going to eat too much. So it's important to understand how to utilize both versions of OMAD. I talk about this in another video. Today, I want to focus on the hormonal obesity theory and how OMAD complements that beautifully. So on my weight loss journey, I've only been successful with metabolic diets. So these are diets that force our body or metabolic pathways. They're not necessarily diets because fasting isn't a diet. But these methods of metabolic enhancement have been beneficial on my journey, and it's the only way I was able to lose weight. When I first started losing weight, I did keto, which is a metabolic pathway that keeps your insulin levels low. You can also call them hormonal diets, I guess, considering that insulin is the number one hormone that is involved in weight gain and weight loss. So what people don't understand, when it comes to weight loss, it is not about the number of calories exclusively. It's what your body decides to do with those calories. And what determines what our body decides to do with those calories is insulin. Levels of insulin, when insulin levels are high, our body is going to store those calories as fat. When insulin levels are low, our body is going to use those calories in our basal metabolic rate, therefore increasing our BMR. So when we eat Food calories stimulate insulin, and then insulin basically stores our calories as fat. When insulin levels are higher than normal, which happens with the diet of the standard American diet, aka Canadian diet, our body is going to store those calories as fat. So basically, you want to convince your body to store nothing if you're trying to lose weight. You want your body to burn those calories. In fact, you want your body to burn fat. So what allows our body to burn fat? Keeping those insulin levels low. So like I use the whole diabetic example, type 1 diabetic versus type 2 diabetic, it makes no sense to give a type 2 diabetic insulin. The more insulin there is, the more you're going to gain weight because that hormone demands our body to store it as weight, as excess weight. So it doesn't make sense to do that. There are two things that cause high levels of insulin. Number one, refined carbohydrates. Notice I said refined processed carbohydrates. Not all carbs are bad. And number two, eating too frequently. When the new nutrition guidelines came in, or not new, but the consequences of the nutrition guidelines that came in in 1977. They recommended that we eat most of our calories from 
processed carbs, some cereals, grains, breads, pastas. And as a result of that recommendation, guess what happened? We created an obesity epidemic and an epidemic of uh, tons of metabolic diseases from diabetes to Alzheimer's to PCOS to fatty liver disease and the whole lot. So when you eat refined carbohydrates, it basically tells our body to produce way more insulin than it needs. And when you have that excess insulin, your body's just going to do one thing and one thing only. It's going to store it as fat. Now, let's tie in one meal a day with the hormonal obesity theory. Now, how does one meal a day help to bring down your insulin levels? Well, When you're fasting for 20 hours or more during the day, you are basically lowering your blood sugar levels. When you lower your blood sugar levels, you lower your insulin levels. So when you put yourself in a state of ketosis, it requires those two things. Your blood sugar levels lower and your insulin levels lower. When that happens, your body has no choice but to tap into its fat for fuel. That's what happens with OMAD. So throughout the majority of the day, you're putting yourself in a fat burning state. So that's how OMAD complements the hormonal obesity theory in that it brings down the insulin levels. So when it does that, it allows you to be in a state where you are in control of your nutrition because when insulin levels are lower, your glucose levels are lower. And it's that spike in glucose levels that causes us to have insatiable hunger. So that cause comes from the processed carbs. So to me, it makes no sense if you are trying to lose weight to basically end your OMAD fast or end any fast by eating refined carbohydrates, because that's all that's going to do is continue that cycle of insatiable hunger. That's what happens with these refined carbohydrates. That's why people can't stop eating, because it makes us want to eat more and more and more, because it forces our body to tap into that sugar burning store as opposed to that fat burning store. It makes our body depend on external sources for fuel as opposed to using our fat as fuel. So that's how the hormonal obesity theory basically complements one meal a day. And that's the reason why it's helped me so much on my weight loss journey. And I hope this video has inspired you to take control of your health, to understand why people are gaining weight or why it's so hard to lose weight. The key is to bring down that insulin level. And OMAD isn't the only way to do it. There are other ways you can do it. You can eat high fiber. You can uh, do the keto diet. There are multiple ways of doing it. But rule of thumb is eating nature's carbs, reducing refined carbohydrates, and eating whole processed foods, and to not eat frequently. And that's another thing I forgot to touch on. When you eat frequently, you're basically spiking your insulin levels. So again, OMAD reduces that time frame where we're eating frequently. We're only eating once a day. So insulin is literally getting spiked once a day. Anyway, if you made it this far into the video, just drop in the word words once a day. And I'm sending you guys mad love. Take care. Bye. Bye.